damos comienzo al solemne acto de clausura del curso académico 2011-2012 y de la incorporación del excelentísimo señor doctor don Daniel Kahneman como académico correspondiente para Israel. Prometéis por vuestro honor guardar su estatuto y trabajar por ella defendiéndola y aportando vuestra cooperación. Sí. En nombre de la Real Academia de Ciencias Económicas y Financieras de España, confirmamos solemnemente vuestro nombramiento de académico correspondiente para Israel. Podréis utilizar sus atributos y ocupar su tribuna pública. Procurad enaltecer esta corporación que hoy os acoge en su seno y contribuid con vuestra meritoria labor al esplendor y honra de las ciencias cuyo estudio y fomento nos ha sido confiado. Si así lo hicierais, que Dios os lo premie. Y si no, os lo demande. I have written a book recently, and the book is called, I don't know how to say it in Spanish, but the book is called in English, Thinking Fast and Slow. And the basic idea, the basic psychological idea is very simple, uh, and you can immediately recognize it. There are really two quite different ways that ideas come to our mind. One way is Well, an example is when I say two plus two, uh, then a number comes to your mind. Uh, when I say the capital of France, then a, a name comes to your mind. You didn't decide for that to happen. It happened by itself. It is the same thing as seeing you know, that a tie is red with black stripes. You have no real choice about how you see it. You just see it. It happens to you. There is a very different way in which thought come, thoughts come to mind. And my example for that is 24 times 17. And when I say 24 times 17, nothing comes to your mind. Certainly no number comes to your mind. You may recognize very quickly that it's a multiplication problem. You may recognize either that you could do it in your head or that you can't do it in your head, but the answer, which happens to be 408, that doesn't come to your mind. You have to produce it. You have to generate it. And that happens in steps, which are fairly slow. You have to put things in memory and take things out of memory and perform computations and store the results. And so there is a whole series of steps really like a computer program that you learn at school and that you execute. Now, not every deliberate thought is like that, but the contrast is between ideas that come to mind automatically and ideas that come to mind with effort. And effort, that is the essence of that second system. So I speak of fast uh, thinking, And I associate it with system one. And I speak of slow thinking, and I associate that with system two. So system one thinking is automatic. System two thinking is deliberate and effortful. When you communicate, when leaders communicate, or when scientists communicate with the public, they should know that they are speaking to system one. It's system one that they are trying to convince or that they should try to convince. It's a very big problem in the communication of scientific evidence. Scientists tend to believe that the public believes in evidence, but the public really doesn't believe in evidence very much. That is certainly true of the American public, and I suspect it is true everywhere. 
We believe in what we believe because we believe in people. We trust people. And in general, we trust people we like. And if people do not trust scientists, it doesn't matter how good the scientists, how good the evidence that the scientists think they have. Because basically, when you're talking about global warming or when you're talking about the economy, you're talking to system one, very largely. To some extent, I don't want to exaggerate it and to say that system two has no role at all, but we tend to exaggerate the role of system two, both in our own thinking and in the thinking of other people. So when other people don't agree with us, we often try to convince them by arguments. And you can ask yourself how many times you have been successful in convincing other people that they have the wrong conclusion by arguing with them. Most arguments fail. Por primera vez, nuestra Real Corporación incorpora un académico lejos de su sede social en Barcelona. Y lo hace en la capital de España, teniendo como marco esta sólida y gran institución que es la Caixa. Nuestro mayor agradecimiento a su presidente, el académico excelentísimo doctor Don Isidro Fainé, a cuya sensibilidad hacia el estudio en el ámbito científico se une una modélica gestión institucional más encomiable aún en estos momentos de tanta complejidad. La relevancia del acto que estamos viviendo surge de la personalidad de nuestro recipiendario que mereció en el año 2002 el Premio Nobel de Economía. El profesor Daniel Kahneman ha querido compartir sus profundos conocimientos y hallazgos con los importantes científicos españoles de la Real Academia de Ciencias Económicas y Financieras que forman parte de la élite del pensamiento teórico y técnico mundiales. Solo a título indicativo, desearíamos citar, además, algunos grandes académicos no españoles. Los premios Nobel, Eric Maskin, Finn Kinlan y Robert Aumann. Los estadistas y gobernantes, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, Thierry de Montbrial, Romano Prodi, Alessandro Bianchi, Raiko Kuzmanovich y Mohamed Lechubi. Los gobernadores de bancos centrales y asesores de jefes de Estado, Muguri Saresco, Sirka Hamalainen Linfors y Andrea Zulay. Los presidentes de academias, Momir Jurovich, Janusz Kapsik y la princesa Sumaya Bin El Hassan. Este solemne acto de entrada de, de, de Daniel Kahneman a nuestra Real Corporación parece una buena ocasión para intentar desentrañar brevemente los íntimos secretos de su pensamiento científico. Y lo hacemos a partir del último de sus trabajos, porque pensar deprisa, pensar despacio, es un monumento a la reflexión que la inteligencia humana ha hecho sobre sí misma. Con este solemne acto, la Real Academia de Ciencias Económicas y Financieras de España se enriquece con un nuevo académico que, estamos seguros, aportará a nuestra Real Corporación nuevos espacios en los que desarrollar todos aquellos elementos que permitan intensificar la lucha contra las desigualdades, las miserias y el abandono que tanto sufren todavía los ciudadanos de muchos estados del planeta. Bienvenido, pues, querido académico, nuestra Real Corporación abre sus brazos para acoger así a una de las personalidades más brillantes de la historia económica. Muchas gracias. Gracias.